So let me get into the word, right? On the 22nd of January of uh, this year, 2022, astronomers, they saw a massive meteor, right? And what they did was they began to look at it because it was a very strange meteor. It was, okay, this is a true story. This meteor was moving extremely, extremely fast. So now what happened is they began to look at the trajectory of it and they started calculating where it's going to go. And they found that it was going to hit planet Earth. And they found that it was a massive enough one to create a lot of damage damage on planet earth and they checked and they calculated and they figured out that on July 24th 2023 it will hit planet earth right now when you hear that your heart is troubled all right but some of us are happy hey I don't have to pay an EMI I don't have to pay my phone bills oh my we can all go hallelujah but many of us are actually troubled because whatever we have will also be destroyed if it doesn't hit us or whatever right so what happens is July, uh, July 4th, uh, 2023 is where it is slated to hit. But what happened was, this is just amazing, right? As they were watching this, they were watching this every day, every second, right? Many groups around the globe, they were watching this. As they were watching it, something happened and that was all of a sudden just changed its trajectory. It moved and I have good news. That meteor is not going to hit planet Earth. Amen, right? So God has told us that that is not the end. Now, when you hear of rumors and rumors of wars, we are troubled because we think it's the end. Yes or no? That's what we are taught. Yes or no? Right now, Russia and uh, 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 the Ukraine, the breadbasket of the world, is at war. And now we are troubled. So I want you to turn with me because you, I want you to understand because you should not be troubled. Because Jesus said that is not the end. So then he gives us a sign to figure out what the end is. And I will show that to you. So turn with me, if you will, to the book of Matthew chapter 24. And we are reading verse 6. Matthew 24 and verse 6. And it says, and you shall hear of war, right? Wars and rumors of wars. See that you not be troubled, he says. Matthew 24 verse 6. See that you do not, do not be troubled. He says, you will hear about wars and you will hear rumors of wars, but do not let your heart be troubled. Why is he saying do not let your heart be troubled? Because all these things have to come, right? Say that, it has to come has to come all these things have to come but the end is not yet see that Jesus said when you hear that Russia and Ukraine are having a war or Russia and America is having a war do not trouble yourself do not be upset because the end is not yet but what we have been taught is when you hear of rumors at wars be ready the Christ of uh, the Christ the king of kings is coming yes or no see that is religion's perspective and that is where our problem starts but I will tell you Jesus said look out for a particular a sign he said and then you will know that I am coming right and he said if you look at this sign and if you figure out what this sign is and if you understand what this sign and you see this very well then you will know the end is there so flip down as you go a little further down in the same chapter you will find the 14th verse can you please read that with me all of you nice and loud the 14th verse of the same chapter which is Matthew 24 and verse 14 it says and this gospel, which gospel? This gospel, which gospel? Come on, which gospel? And this gospel, read it nice and loud, guys. Come on, nice and loud. Those watching at home as well. And this gospel of the kingdom, oh, sorry, what, what, what? Look at me, look at me. Which gospel, church? Which gospel, church? Which gospel? This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached where? In all the world and for a witness unto all nations. Right? Amen. Hallelujah. And then he says what? What is his next statement? And he says, and then shall the end come. Amen. Right. Look at me. Now, since when did we start speaking about kingdom? <laughs> we started speaking about kingdom from the, from the month of January. So are we getting closer to the end times? I do not know. You guys have to figure it out. But when the whole world, when all the churches realize that they have been deceived by the demonic and then they realize that the, the gospel which Jesus taught was about the kingdom is then when you begin to understand that his coming is at hand. Amen. Why? Because he said so. I'm not saying this. He said so. Just for you to understand. Let's read it one more time. And it says, and this gospel, which gospel? Which gospel? This gospel of the kingdom. Which kingdom? His kingdom. What was the first statement Jesus made? His public statement. Do you know? He said the first word was repent. You know what repent means? Change your thinking. Change your mindset. Why did he say that? Because 20, 30, 40 years we've got religion ingrained into us. So what happens is when Jesus says kingdom is coming here, is here, you will not understand it. You will reject it. He said you need to repent. Say repent. 
What does repent mean? Change your thinking. Change your mindset. Why? Because you are what you think you are. If you think you are following a religion, you will always be religious. What will you do? You will get no results. You will never get fruits. Why? You become like the fig tree. And that's where our problem starts. Right? A fig tree that is planted in a vineyard. Right? Who's the vineyard? Who's the wine? It's Jesus. But a fig tree which is planted in the vineyard is an alien in that area. It will never bring forth fruit. Right? So he said you should not be a fig tree. You should be entwined with the vine to bear fruit. Why? Because when I come, I'm looking for people with fruits. I'm not looking for the Christian. I'm not looking for the guy wearing the white and white or the red and red. I'm looking for the guy who's bearing fruit. Say fruit. Say fruit. He didn't even say fruits. He said fruit. Singular. Right? I will teach you that later. Right? 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come. So church, when is the end going to come? When the gospel of the... Not the gospel of salvation... Not the gospel of healing, not the gospel of resurrection, not the gospel of, of covenant, nothing. He says what? When the gospel of the kingdom is preached. All right? Now, so when the correct gospel is preached, and it is preached around the world, right? To all the people, that is when he is going to come, right? So now, Jesus took his 12 disciples. He trained them, yes or no? He taught them kingdom. And then he said, let me teach you how to demonstrate the power of the kingdom. So he demonstrated, he taught, and the Bible says he gave them authority and dominion so that they will be able to go out and do signs and wonders. Yes or no? Yes or no? Say something. Yes? Right. Now, there was one thing he did not trust them with. He did not trust them with what they were going to say. So he said, let me teach you what you need to speak as well. Because when you go to these people, you should not speak your testimony. You should not tell them your opinion. You should not tell them your life story. You should not tell them something about anything else. You should tell them only one thing. And that one thing is what I'm going to tell you. And what am I going to tell you? Let's see. Turn with me to the book of Luke chapter 9. And let us read verse 1. Luke chapter 9 and verse 1. Then he called his 12. Right? And he called his 12 disciples and he gave them what? He gave them power and he gave them authority over all the devils and to cure diseases. So that means all diseases, all demons, anything which is not from God, you have power and authority over. Look at somebody, look left and right, right and say, you have power and authority. Some of you are saying, Pastor, if I had authority of my wife, I'd be so happy. And Jesus never gave you authority over your wife or your husband, right? It's only over the devils and over all circumstances around you. So then he called his 12 disciples together and he gave them power and authority over all the devils and to cure diseases, right? Now I told you Jesus did not trust the disciples what to speak. So let's see verse 2. Come on. Let's see what uh, verse 2 says. And he sent them to preach what? To preach what? Talk to me. What did he send them to preach? He did not say go and preach about salvation. He did not say Jesus is come. He never told them to say that. He did not say that Jesus is risen from the dead. No. He did not talk about any of these things. He said preach one thing. What is that? Preach the kingdom of God. Paul the apostle preached the kingdom of God. Peter preached the kingdom of God. Every person in the Bible speaks the kingdom of God. Daniel in the Old Testament talks about the kingdom of God. Abraham in the Old Testament talks about the kingdom of God. And you know what we talk about? We talk about everything else except kingdom. That means we are under great deception church. Because Jesus never even brought a church. He did not bring a religion. He brought a political system. He brought kingdom. He brought authority down. Why? What did man lose? What did Adam lose? He lost power and dominion and authority. Right? And this is what Jesus brings back to you and I. Now watch this. Right? Now. You would think that Jesus would stop with the 12, yeah? <laughs> Flip the page over. Luke chapter 10. Jesus takes 70 other guys. Splits them into, into teams of 35. Into twos. And he, and he trains them. With power and with authority. Let's read. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also. And he sent them two and two before him. That is 35 teams, yeah? And before his face into every city and place where he himself would go. Right? Got it? Look at me. Now, go to Luke chapter 10 and verse 9. Same chapter, little further down. And this is what he tells them to speak as well. And he says, and heal the sick that are therein. And he say unto them, come on, talk to me. The kingdom of God 
is come near unto you. So what, what, what did Jesus tell these 70 guys to speak? What did he tell the 70 to speak? Come on, why are you so quiet? Did he tell them to speak anything else? What are we speaking when we go and uh, tell somebody about uh, Jesus Christ? We tell them how wonderful Jesus is. He's marvelous. He's a counselor. He hung on the cross for you. He shed his blood for you. Stop saying all that. Stop, start teaching kingdom. When you start teaching kingdom, they will come. Why? Kingdom always, every time Jesus taught about kingdom, he did it with signs and with wonders. He healed the sick. He redeemed the people who are in bondage. Right? Watch this. Right? Now, look. Where are we? Luke 10. But whatsoever city, okay, here we are. The, uh, 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 where am I? Luke 10 and verse 9. And heal the sick that are there and say unto them, the kingdom of God has come near unto you. Now verse 10, please follow and be very serious about the next few verses I'm reading. I want 100% attention here, please. Verse 10. But into whatever city you enter and they receive you not, go your way out into the street of the same and say... Even the very dust of your city, which cleaveth not on us, we do wipe off against you, notwithstanding, be ye sure of this, that the kingdom of God is come near you. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable, tolerable in the day for Sodom than for that city. Now, please look at me. Those who didn't understand, put your hand up. I didn't understand this. You can read this ten times, you won't understand it. So I've made a very easy thing for you to understand. I pulled it out from the, 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 the Passion Version. All right? And I want you to follow this with me on the TPT or the, the Passion Translation. Are you with me? Luke chapter 10 and verse 8. It's somewhere there uh, if you're on the thing. Right. It says, come on, can you read quickly with me? When you enter a new town, go on, and you have been welcomed by its people, eat what is served you, heal the sick, Tell them all, God's kingdom has arrived and is now within your reach. But when you enter a city, and they, now listen, listen carefully. When you enter a city and they do not receive you, say to them publicly, we wipe from our feet the very dust of your streets as a testimony before you. Understand this, God's kingdom came within your reach and yet you have rejected God's invitation. Jesus continued. Now, Jesus is serious here, right? He is telling these guys, guys, let's not mess around. What I'm going to bring is something which is life-changing. If they don't understand kingdom, they don't receive kingdom, hell with them. That's all it is, literally. Now, watch this. Jesus in verse 12 says, Jesus continues. Let me say it clearly. What is, <laughs> when somebody says, let me say it clearly, what does it mean? There is no ambiguity in it. It is 100% clear. He said, let me say it clearly. On the day of judgment, the wicked people of Sodom will have a lesser degree of judgment than the city that rejects you. For Sodom did not have the opportunity that was given to them. It shook me in my boots when I saw this. He said, if you reject kingdom, the judgment on you is worse than what's going to be happening on Sodom. And what was the problem with Sodom? You know the problem. And they were destroyed by fire. Right? Now he's saying, if you, the body of the Christ, the body, the church, if you don't understand kingdom, your fate is worse. Yes or no? Come on, talk to me. This is not me saying it. This is the, the word saying it. He's saying, you've got to figure it out. Listen to what I'm saying. I cannot be more clear than this is what he's saying. Should I read the last verse again? Twelfth verse again. Jesus continued. Let me say it <laughs> clearly. On the day of judgment, the wicked people of Sodom will have a lesser degree of judgment than the city that rejects you. For Sodom did not have the opportunity that was given to them. Sodom never had the opportunity. Brother, sister, those watching at home, today you have an opportunity to receive kingdom. To come out of religion, to change your mindset, to change your thinking. And the opportunity is right now, right here, available to you. That's why from the beginning of this year, the only thing I've been teaching is kingdom. The next three, four, five years till it comes, what, will I, what am I going to teach? I'm going to teach kingdom. That's why I've been telling you, I've been studying and studying and studying kingdom. And I'm telling you, there is such a powerful thing in it. So Jesus said, you've got to repent or you've got to change your mindset. Because all these years, for the last 30, 40 years, we've been hearing what? Religion, madam. And we follow that. And what does it do? It teaches you to tolerate sickness. It teaches you to tolerate all kinds of nonsense. And they say, in the sweet by and by, when you reach the beautiful shore, everything will be fine. Hey, don't you know when you reach the beautiful shore, he's going to kick you down back to heaven and ask you to rule over here? So if you don't know how to rule now, then how will you rule then? 
I rest my case. Listen and listen well. If you do not know how to have dominion here now, what are you going to do in heaven? Because heaven was never meant for you. You never had heaven. Religion says we will go to heaven and we will live there for eternity. No, Jesus didn't teach you that. He said you will come to earth and you will rule with him on earth. Because man has been created for earth, not for heaven. So it is high time that we do not be like these people who do not receive the kingdom. We must receive the kingdom and quickly, my brother and my sister. That is why I've been teaching you this over and over and over again. Last week, if you remember, I told you about entering into the correct path. The straight is the gate and narrow is the way. All right. He said, enter the narrow path. Why? He did not say it was a difficult path. He said it is narrow. He said not many people find it. Uh, put that up. Put that up. Matthew 7, 13 and 14. Put that up quickly. He said, enter in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go there at. Because straight is the gate. Verse 14. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth, leadeth unto life. He's saying, Jesus says, come to the narrow way come into the kingdom that's where life is because you know why you've been in deception for the last 30 40 years you cannot understand kingdom now i'll tell you the truth you've been in deception for the last 2000 years somewhere after jesus's uh, resurrection and and ascension to heaven somewhere we lost out all of creati- uh, uh, creation all of mankind has lost out on the truth of the gospel the only message for three and a half years that this man preached Whilst the kingdom is here, enter the kingdom. Come right now. Have dominion, have power, have authority. That's all he preached. And you know what we do? We speak everything else except kingdom. And you know what he did? He spoke kingdom and then he demonstrated the power of the kingdom. What did he do? Over every circumstance of his life, he demonstrated the power of God. He demonstrated the power which is available for you and I in the kingdom. One day he's hungry. He looks left, look right. And look what, what is he looking for? He's looking for McDonald's or he's looking for KFC. He does not find anything. All he finds is the fig tree. Ha-ha. Again, what's the problem with the fig tree? Remember last week I taught you about the fig tree? A fig tree which is in a vineyard is not going to bear fruit. You got to be a wine in a vineyard. You cannot be a fig tree. You cannot be a religious person in the kingdom. There is no room for religiosity. So what happens is the fig tree had no fruit. Look left, look right and say the fig tree had no fruit. So unfortunately, we have another fig tree right now. And this fig tree also has no fruit. Right? Jesus is angry. He sees a fig tree. No fruit. What does he do? He cursed the tree. And right from the roots, boom. Do you know that he had authority over every creation? Jesus has authority over every creation. He's showing you those who are kingdom citizens have authority over every form of creation. Did he not say that in Genesis 126? Yes or no? He cursed the fig tree. Right? Again, we're stuck with the fig tree. No fruit. Look behind you. Quickly. There's a fig tree right behind you. Fruitless fig tree. But I speak, no, that you will not be fruitless fig trees. God is not going to come for those who do not bear fruit. Please understand, you need to come into the narrow path, the direct path, the clear path. Let me give you another example. Jesus saw, took his disciples. He said, guys, get on the boat. Go to the other side. What did Jesus do immediately after that? Talk to me. What did Jesus do? He said, get, get on the boat. Go to the other side. So Jesus goes up to a mountain and he begins to pray. And he prays and he prays and he prays. Right? And then what happens after that? It's around 6 or 7 in the evening. He comes down from the mountain. Now he has to get to the other side. Now there is a problem. What is the problem? Why did he walk on water? What was the problem? Why did he walk on water? Was, it, was he trying to show a miracle? No, he was not trying to show a miracle. What was the issue? Well, pulls out his mobile phone, tries to look for an Uber, tries to look for an Ola. Nothing. There's no transportation available. There are no other boats for him to get to the other side. So he says, well, no problem. Let me just... Anyway, I have authority over the circumstances. Let me, circumstances. Let me just walk on the water and go. Every step he took becomes concrete. And he just keeps walking and he was walking and he's walking. What did he do? Took authority over circumstances. Amen. When you are under circumstances, dominion comes into your life and he says, take authority. But you know what we do? No, we are religious. In the sweet by and by, we will have authority. No, 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 no. He said, now. Look at somebody and say, I have authority now. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. I have authority. authority. Where? What happened to the rest of you? 
In the sweet by and by. Okay. This group is in the sweet by and by. This group is in the authority now. Amen to you guys. All right. And, and look at the numbers. The numbers are few. That's what Jesus said. <laughs> Come on. Wake up. Wake up, those watching at home as well. He has given you authority, not for the sweet by and by, for the now. All right? He takes a, a, a authority over every circumstances that he's under. And he says, hey, I'm not going to be stopped. Let me just walk on the water. Let me get to the other side. Why? There's a man who's possessed with a legion who needs healing. Let me go there. I'm going to fulfill my purpose. And he walks on water. Nothing could stop this man. A group of people comes against him. You know what he did? He just whispered a prayer. Lord, let them be blind. And he just walks right through them. Circumstances. He took authority. He took control. He took dominion. Now I want you to understand this. I hope you understand what Jesus is trying to teach us, right? What is he trying to teach us? He's trying to teach us to take authority over the circumstances. My worship leader said, oh, we have all had difficult times. No. And I'm thinking, man, God has given you authority to take authority over the difficult times. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Where? In the sweet by and by. No, he said now, today, in your workplace, when you have a problem, in the name of Jesus, bow down. That's what you should be saying. Exercise what God has given you, right? So the meaning for the word dominion in the Hebrew language is like this. Make a note of this if you will. It means to govern. Come on, come on, make a note of it. To govern, to control, to rule, to manage, to master, to lead. It's on the screen. Make a note of this. Take a picture of the screen. That's all you have to do. To govern, to control, to rule, to manage, to master, to lead. Let me say this again. Can you do this again with me? To govern. Say that with me. To govern. To control. To rule. Come on. Say that with me. To manage. Uh, to master. To lead. What does the word dominion mean? He says these things. This is what comes under the word dominion. To govern. To control. To rule. To manage. To master. To lead. Have you heard of a man called Cristiano Ronaldo? Why am I talking about Cristiano Ronaldo? Because I was watching a documentary about him. From the time he was 18 years old, he's come into his purpose. Right? He's a Roman Catholic. He does not know any of these things. But you know what he's done? He has followed this dominion. He, what has he followed? To govern, to control, to rule, to manage, to master, to lead. He is the number one footballer in the world. He is the best at what he does. He is 36, 36 years old or something, I think, right now. And the, and the doctors are saying he's still got the body of a 24, 25 year old. Why? Because he's the best at what he does. He is there. He is governing. He's controlling. He's ruling. He's managing. He's mastering. He's leading. What is he operating in? Dominion. And he's not even a Christian. He, I mean, I'm sorry, he's a Roman Catholic. He does not know anything about this. Why? We are stuck in a religion. Heard of Michael Jordan? Heard of Kobe Bryant? I mean, around the globe, around the globe, there are people who are mighty, mighty leaders and, and people who, are, who have taken such powerful authority. But we, the body of Christ, we've been deceived. And the devil hates it when you start understanding kingdom. You know why? The minute you understand kingdom, he loses his authority. He's not bothered if you pray. He's not bothered if you pray. I mean, fast. He's not bothered if you read your Bible. The minute you start talking about kingdom, oh God, he will come running. He will leave everything he has. That's what the, the parable of the sower says, right? The devil will come and he'll steal the word of the kingdom. So then if the devil will leave everything aside and come and steal the word of the kingdom, then you've got to understand how important the word of the kingdom is. That's the only thing he spoke for three and a half years of his life. And before that, he operated in kingdom, by the way. All right. Turn with me, if you will, to the book of Matthew chapter 25. And I want you to pay attention. I want you to read this with me. Matthew 25. And we're going to be reading from the verse 14. Can somebody read the first part, please? First part, for the, for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. Stop. Look at me. So this is the parable of the talents. Say talents. Parable of the talents. Yes. Yes. Right. So what is this parable about? <laughs> What's this parable about? Parable of the talents. Yeah. Yes. Just slap the person next to you, please. He starts with one word. He starts, the kingdom of heaven is like. What is he talking about? Talents? No. What is he talking about? He's talking about kingdom. You guys are looking at me shocked. 
What is he talking about? Please. He's talking about kingdom. He's using an example of talents. So what is the end result of the talents? What he's talking about, the example is the kingdom. Right? What is he saying? What is the title of the message today? It's a parable of results. Part three. Right? Anywhere, everywhere. 85% of the parables talk about results. He wants you to have results. He wants you to have dominion, authority to govern, to lead, my brother. Right? So here we are. For the kingdom of heaven is a man traveling into a far country who calls his own, say own. He doesn't call the stranger. He calls his own servants. That's you and I. And he delivers unto them all his goods. Everything. Planet earth is your domain. Yes or no? Yes or no? Say something. Yes. Now, verse 15 says, And he gave five talents to another two and to another one, to every man, read this with me, to every man according to his ability. Right? So everybody has an ability. According to that ability, God gave a talent. And there's a dear brother of mine sitting there who God has been given an ability, and today he's just got a promotion. And he's come here to celebrate with us. Why? Because he started taking dominion and authority. He started to govern because there is a gifting called management in him. And he's been optimizing that. And he has become a senior man in the company. Why? Because he's following this. Rule. And does he know what he's doing? No, he doesn't know what he's doing. But without knowing itself, the Lord is guiding him. But if you know what God is trying to do with you and you walk in the direction, you know how much faster you will get there? Amen. Nobody's saying amen today. All right. Now, every man, according to his several ability, and straight away this man took his journey. Now, verse 16. Please, please, please follow. 16. And then, he that received the five talents went and... Huh? Went and... Went and... I'm sorry, what was that? He's traded a religious word. No, it is a word involved in business. He said, I've given you an ability. I've given you a gift according to your ability. Take that gift, do something with it, trade it, make it sharp, make it the best, stand before kings because that gifting which I gave you is what is going to give you your increase. So if my brother there operates in the spirit of management, my God, God will say, bless him. I will show him favor. I will lead him. Watch this. And then he that received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. Results, yes or no? What percentage of result? 100% result. Amen. All right. Now, and likewise, he that received two also gained the two. But he that received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. And he that received one, look, 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 look at me, look at me, look at me. The one, the guy who received the one, the Lord recognized his ability. He recognized that he is worthy of a gifting. He is worthy of a talent. The Lord calls that man somebody powerful. Look at what God called uh, that coward Gideon. What did he call that coward Gideon? He's like this man. What did he call the coward Gideon? You mighty man of valor. God sees God calls you according to what you have, not what you don't have. He looks at this man. He says, you have ability. Let me give you one gift. Your ability is not as big as the other guys. It's not as powerful as the other guys. That's fine. But you still have ability. Let me give you one. You take that one and let's see how faithful you are. And that's the whole gospel for you. Be faithful in the little. Because the dominion, the power, the authority. Be faithful in the little. Right? I mean, 35, 30 something years right now I've been in ministry. By God's grace, I've traveled most of the world. Sitting in my office room, I would never be able to do that. But travel most of the world. And where? I carried the gospel. And that's such a privilege. Now watch this. The master recognized that this guy had some abilities. Right? So he gave him one. Now, this man takes the talent. And he hides it. Brother Ben Vijay, I'm not available this Sunday. Can you preach? Pastor, I've got a wedding to go to. I have a, a board meeting to attend. I have this meeting. I have to go there. I have to do some shopping. I'm so busy. I cannot come out. Worship leader Sam. So and so is not available. Will you please come? Oh no, I have to go. My father in law is waiting for me. I'm so busy. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm doing that. Oh, those of you watching at home, come to church. Oh no, no, no. We're so busy doing nothing at home. Thank you. Stay at home. You will never walk in your victories. 
Sorry. This is the truth. And many people don't understand this. You have something. And if you bury it, my brother, my sister, you know what happened to that man? I'm sorry to say this. You know what happened to that man? You tell me. He was bound hand and feet and thrown into. I'm sorry. You guys need to wake up. <laughs> Heard of the ostrich story? Heard of the ostrich story? I'll show you. The ostrich, every time it gets afraid. Have you seen an ostrich? It's bigger than me. Right? It's huge. Right? Every time an ostrich gets afraid, you know what it does? <laughs> it digs a hole in the ground and buries its head. <laughs> yeah. Just like our little children. They, they close their eyes so that they think they are hiding. That's what an ostrich does. If you see the size of an ostrich, it's huge, man. I mean, it's like 10 chicken tikkas to put together. <laughs> right? It hides its head in the ground. Why? Because it's afraid. So a lion that comes by looks at the ostrich and says, Woo, barbecue chicken waiting for me. <laughs> Think about it. Think about it. Now, watch this, all right? What was the ostrich's fear? Fear. I'm fear of the stage. I'm a school teacher. I stand in front of a lot of people, but I cannot preach why I'm afraid. Watch this. Matthew 25, 19 says, After a long time, the Lord of those servants come, cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Your entire life must, be revolving, must revolve around this statement. Good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee the Pope over Rome. No, sorry, what did he say? Are we talking religion here, church? Are we talking religion here? No, what are we talking? We are talking political here. In the Old Testament, every person you read about, Daniel, Chandra, Meshach, Moses, all of them are leaders of their countries. Not one of them followed a religion. Think with me. Somewhere we have been deceived. Watch this. The Lord said unto him, well, thou, well, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler of many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. I will make thee ruler. That means you're operating in dominion right now. Therefore, come and be ruler with me. That's what he's saying. He says you have to learn to operate in kingdom authority. Otherwise, in the sweet by and by, when Jesus comes to rule a thousand years, you're lost. Why? You do not know how to rule now. You do not know how to operate in authority right now. And my brother, time to wake up. Now, he also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, deliver us down to me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the Lord, into the joy of the Lord. 24. Please follow 24 with me. Then he which had received the one talent. See this guy, yeah? All the other guys had very short short. Sharp statements. The guys who make excuses have a lot of hot air. Yes? Those who are managers, senior managers, you'll know. The guy who doesn't do his performance, right? Doesn't perform. What will he do? He'll have a whole lot of excuses. And what do you do after hearing the excuses? You fire him, right? Now, then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, read, read loud, please. Read loud. Lord, I knew thee. I know all about you. I know all about, every, I, I, I know your reputation. Read, read, read. I knew thee, that thou art a, come on guys, can you read? Hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, ostrich syndrome. Look left, look right. Ask them, do you have the ostrich syndrome? Come on. Ostrich syndrome. Ask them, do you have the ostrich syndrome? Yes? No. Nobody's asking. You're scared of the other fellow. <laughs> Fear right there. And I was afraid. Why are you afraid? Who made you afraid? 
I want you all together today now to put your hands together for my dear brother Ben Vijay. Come on. I'm sure you can do better than that. When he first st stood up to speak his message, you could hear his knees knocking right outside. Okay, you could, the whole place was full of sweat because he was so afraid. But amen, what did he do? He overcame. Afraid is not an excuse. You understand? God has given you a talent. He needs you to do something with it. But I was afraid and I went and hid thy talent in the earth. And then he pulls it out and says, there, I'm so proud to give it back to you. I'm so happy. I'm so blessed that I gave you back what you gave me. Those who are team leaders, if they don't perform, what do you guys do? I don't know. What do you guys do? Think with me. His Lord answered and said unto him, thou wicked and slothful servant. What does he call him? No, no, no. What does he call him? Slothful is lazy. What does he call him? He calls him wicked. People who are followers of Christ and do nothing with their gifting are branded wicked. Look left, look right very slowly. Very slowly. You know, like in these uh, horror movies, the head turns slowly, you know. Look left, look right very slowly. Thou wicked and slothful servant. Thou know that I reap where I have, no, I have not sown and gather where I have not stored. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchanges and then at my coming I should have at least received my own with a shari. Take therefore the talent from him and give it to him who has. Why? The one with the guy with the ten is the best performer. For unto everyone that has will be given and he shall have abundance. Read 29 for me. For everyone that has, he shall be given and he shall have abundance. Read that with me. Please understand. For everyone that has, he shall be given, right? And he shall be having more abundance. What does he say? If you have something, use it, develop it. That talent will be amazing. It will help you a lot. You will produce a lot more with it. Plus over and above, I will give you more. Once you get more, you will have abundance out of it. Like Cristiano Ronaldo, he's a football player. He's making millions. Every two weeks, he makes so many millions. I every week. Now what happens is he has fine-tuned his ability and his skill. And the Lord is saying to you and I the same thing. That's all it is. That's where the kingdom, dominion, power and authority comes in. Right? But from him that he hath not be taken away even that which he has. I want to tell you my brother and my sister. It is not just the giftings that you have. It's not just the nine gifts that you have in your life. You have administration skills. You have leadership skills. You have abilities which are way beyond which you are not even discovered. And he's saying take those out bring those out bring those out and he says look at this young man there called, called, called my, my, my son called Biju he is amazing with numbers so you know what he needs to climb up higher why because he's operating in my anointing he's operating in my authority so you know what he says he says Michael 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 come here quick, quickly quickly he says Michael I want you to get the angel called favor bring favor over here so favor comes and stands in front of him and God says go to Biju's, Biju's house and he says give him favor in every area that he's walking on why he is my son He's my kingdom son. What is he doing? He is operating in my giftings. He is sharpening his talent. What does he need? He needs favor. Then he sees another man. He sees a young man called Mana, called Bijosh over there. And he says, hey, angel, once, as soon as you're finished with Bijosh, go to Bijosh. Why? He is another man. I've seen him with administration skills. He's operating highly in those areas. Take him, take him, take him. And go there and give him favor. And then he sees his wife and he says, whoa, whoa, she's an amazing teacher. Now you need to give her favor as well. Now, he says, wait, 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 wait. You know what, Michael? Call. Two other angels. Call, call, call. Call goodness <laughs> and mercy and send them to their houses. Why? These guys are developing. They're fine-tuning their gifts. Send them to Sam's house. Send them to Samson's house. Send them to the Gaurav's house. Send them to every one of your houses. Why? They are developing their abilities. That, my brother, is what kingdom is all about. He's sending to Ben Vijay's house. He's sending it to uh, Hannah's and Stephen's house. He's sending it to Shirley's house. He's sending it to every one of you. 
And that's where we are lacking. The favor of God is in your house. This goodness and mercy is in your house. All you have to do is start operating in his giftings. A doctor doesn't become a doctor just because he feels like it. It has ordained by God for him to be a doctor. A lawyer doesn't become a lawyer because he likes law. You know how hard it is to learn law. It has to be discipline in him. It has, God has to put that in him. That seed has to come into him. But there will always be some circumstance in life which changes you that that seed, that gifting will come out. And that's what I want you to understand. Paul told Timothy, neglect not the gifting that is in your life. In 1 Timothy 4 and 14, neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given over to you by laying on of hands or by prophecy. Every one of you here has a gift. Please stand to your feet. We're going to close now. Every one of you has a gift. Every one of you has a purpose. Every one of you has authority, dominion, power to rule, to govern. But my brother, my sister, do not hide it. Do not neglect the gift which is in you. Do not neglect the talent that is in you. Talents are always seen during crisis. But instead of that, if you just ask the Holy Spirit to show you your talent, he will. Do not wait for the crisis. Therefore, my brother, do not neglect your gift. Find your gift and quickly multiply it. And let it multiply in your life and make you walk in abundance.